What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. On today's episode, I'm gonna share with you how to swim the 200 IM. Yes, the individual medley. That's butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. We're gonna put it all together. So whether you're trying to make the Olympic final in the 200 IM, or you're trying to figure out how to survive this 200 individual medley, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna break it down from the perspective of the 200 IM, but if you haven't already checked out my video on how to swim the 400 IM like Michael Phelps and Katinka Hosu, make sure you check that out. We'll make sure it's pinned somewhere in this video because it's super important to understand those principles and how they apply relative to the 200 IM. So I've got 10 different tips for you guys. The first five are very similar to the 400 IM, explain why they're different and why you should focus on them specifically in the 200 IM. And then I'm gonna have five more tips and I'm gonna focus on the 200 IM and how it's completely different than the 400 IM. So let's begin. The first thing here is negative splitting. We've talked about this in the 400 IM. It's the concept of swimming faster on the second half of each respective stroke. So if you break apart a 200 IM, you've got 450s. Whether you're in a short course pool or a long course pool, you're gonna have to do 450s of each 150 of each of the different strokes. Now your goal is to try and negative split each of those 50s. Now this rule applies in the 400 IM and is much stronger because you actually will have a flip turn no matter what in the long course or in the short course at the 50 mark halfway. In the 200 IM, if you're swimming long course, you might not actually have any flip turn in the middle. You might just go one length of 50 and you've got to make sure you're building it. You want to build in because you don't want to burn yourself out on the first few strokes. Now, the more advanced you get and the faster you are in swimming, you might be able to go hard all the way through, but your feeling should be one of a descending pattern, meaning you're increasing your speed throughout the duration of that 50. You're negative splitting it, you're building, and if there is a clock and you're able to get your 25 splits, you should actually negative split the second 25. You should be faster on the second 25 than you were on the first 25. And so you wanna think about these 400 IMs or 200 IMs in quarter, so you build each quarter to equal a sum of fully one 200 IM. The second thing here is you wanna have this easy speed. We talk about this in the 400 IM. The butterfly shouldn't really be that taxing because after a 100 fly or a 50 fly in the 200 IM, you're completely toast if you go out really fast. So you wanna have this easy speed. And the way you can do that is making sure you have a really good breathing pattern. You know how often you're gonna breathe. Oftentimes, you dive in for that 200 IM, you feel really good, you're looking at the bottom the pool, you don't need oxygen, you're just cranking. And then you get to that first 25 mark and you realize you only took one breath or you didn't breathe at all and you're flying and you know you're gonna pay for it on the second half of the 200 IM. So just like the 400 IM, you gotta have a breathing pattern in the 200 IM, whether you're in a short course 25 pool or a long course pool, super important. And another way that you can have this easy speed is really not relying on your legs for that initial 100, that initial butterfly and backstroke. You wanna save your legs a little bit for the second half. So you can go pretty fast if you're well trained in practice, in the first half, in the underwaters, but you don't wanna really max yourself out. And you can tell the difference for yourself or if you watch a top swimmer, there's a difference between going fast and going really fast. And oftentimes that difference of going into that higher gear to really crank out those underwaters comes at the expense of tearing apart your legs. So it's not worth it in the 200 IM, especially definitely not worth it in the 400 IM because you will pay the price later on in the race. Of course, it's relative based on your training and, and how, much, how advanced of a swimmer you are, but you wanna have that easy speed on the first half. The third tip here is to train all the strokes. I know that sounds really obvious, it's the 200 IM. Of course, you're gonna train all the strokes, but you would believe, believe it or not, I come across swimmers all the time, they're not really training that much IM. They're not training that much strokes. They're just doing a lot of freestyle. So you gotta make sure you're mixing in a potentially uncomfortable amount of stroke, but you're also doing it with super high technique. So I want you to focus on your technique from day number one. It's so important to build a foundation of stroke mechanics because you can't really neglect any of the strokes. You have to be good at all of them. In the 100 IM, on the other hand, you can actually get away with some imperfections and sort of muscle through it because it's such a short distance. And if you go underwater for half or two thirds of the length, you're not actually swimming that much. In the 200 IM, you have to actually swim. In the 400 IM, you have to swim a lot. So as the distance increases, you have to fall back on fundamentals. So make sure you're training all the strokes, focus on technique on all of the different strokes. Now the fourth tip 
is to really mix up how you do your IM training. So we've talked about doing IM and you should do all the strokes, but how are you doing the strokes? Now, when it comes to actually creating workouts and being creative, you wanna make sure you're giving yourself some muscle confusion because you don't wanna do just fly back breaths free in 100 form or 200 form or 400 IM form. That gets boring on your body physically, but also mentally. So here's five different ways that you can actually change it up. You can do something called transition IM. I love this, you do 650s or maybe you do 1250s or 1850s. Basically what you do, it's like a 350 cycle. The first 50, you go butterfly on the first, half, backstroke on the second half. You can do this in short course or long course. It works better in short course. 50 number two, you go backstroke, breaststroke, and then the third 50, you go breaststroke, freestyle. That way, whatever stroke you finish with is what you start with on the second 50. We'll make sure those are listed down below. I know that was a little confusing, but transition IM is a great way to work on the transition part of the stroke, changing from one stroke to the other. Fly to back, back to breast, breast to free. If you're tracking along with me, make sure you like this video and let me know down below in the comments. Another variation is called FRIM, Freestyle I Am. This is where you take out the butterfly completely and you swap in freestyle. This makes this a little bit easier and you can train at a higher aerobic threshold because your body's not getting tired by doing repeats of butterfly. We actually talk about that in the last tip here on number five, but firstly, it's un important to understand that butterfly is really tiring. I guess you should already know that if you swim, butterfly is really exhausting. So if you take that out and you work on freestyle, you can really maximize your training on the other three strokes, on the breaststroke and the backstroke, and then the last part, freestyle. Another variation is broken eye, and this is probably my favorite. This is where you'll actually do something like 450s, but the, you won't go 50 butterfly, 50 backstroke, 50 breaststroke, 50 free. Instead, you'll still do 25s. It's like two 100 IMs broken. So the first 50, you go fly back. The second 50 is the second half of the 100 IM. You go breast free. Then you repeat that. You can do that 450s, 850s, 1050s, whatever. The idea is you're doing broken versions of a 50, of a 100 IM, a 200 IM, or even a 400 IM. I really like those. Then we have reverse IM, which is exactly how it sounds. You do the reverse order. So Instead of fly, back, breast, free, you go free, breast, back, fly. Yes, it's very difficult building into something where you finish with butterfly. So really be careful there. Make sure you have the right stroke fundamentals and you're not completely tearing down your stroke. But ooh, that's a good one to train. And then of course you have variations with equipment. So you can do all of these sets I just said with or without different types of equipment, whether that's fins, or paddles, or a snorkel, or resistance that we'll actually talk about, like stretch cords or things like that. Basically, developing your body in a way that confuses your muscles, so that way you're always taking your training to the next level. And if we, as we've seen with Michael Phelps or Katinka Hosu or Ryan Lochte or any of these great IM swimmers, the training regimen is absolutely brutal. And so the fifth point here, before we get into the finals five, is you wanna split up the IM and butterfly. So butterfly, like we've mentioned, is very exhausting. And because it's so exhausting, you wanna make sure that you're training it appropriately. And you can do this for any short axis stroke, like breast stroke as well. So for breast and fly, I actually recommend training them on their own. Because if you only train butterfly within the IM, it's gonna sacrifice a little bit of speed on the back and the breast and the free, the second three quarters of the IM. And you're not really gonna be able to develop that easy speed that you need on the first quarter of that 100 IM. So I recommend breaking apart the fly, focus on doing a lot of frim where you do freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle, and really have that easy speed. Of course, you put it all together sometimes, but I recommend breaking those two apart because you have to train fly at speed to give you the easy speed. Now, before we get into the final five where we really focus on the 200 IM, I wanna thank today's sponsor, My Swim Pro Elite. If you don't already have the My Swim Pro app installed on your phone, you're missing out. My Swim Pro Elite is the ultimate personal swim coach to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. The app is free to download for iOS and Android. You can write and log an unlimited number of workouts for free. And with the subscription, you unlock the personal coach, which gives you dynamic training plans, workouts, and instructional video content to swim faster and smarter than ever before. The My Swim Pro app also syncs with the Apple Watch and Garmin smartwatches. So so you have the app and you have the coach right there through the workout set by set. It's an absolutely amazing app and it belongs on every swimmer's phone. Join over 1 million swimmers on the app and it will be linked down below in the description. Again, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app. It'll take your swimming to the next level. Now these final five tips, we're really focusing on something that's 
only unique to the 200 IM. We can forget about the 400 IM for now. Let's focus on the 200 IM. Focus on your underwaters. Now, obviously, underwaters are important in every event, but this really differentiates the best swimmers from the good swimmers and the good swimmers from the okay swimmers. How you come off the walls. Top swimmers in a short course version of the race will go anywhere from 60 to 65 percent underwater. Not only are you spending a ton of time underwater, you're generating more speed when you come up off of the underwater. So the first few strokes are actually faster as a result. So even though you're only spending 60 to 65 percent of the time underwater, I really, the next five to 10% of the length are carried over speed from those underwaters. Now I know this is for the elite, elite level to be able to go more than halfway underwater in a 25 distance pool. But if you continue training and really focus on it, this is the biggest differentiator of swimmers in the 200 IM in the short course version. You don't need to look further than Caleb Dressel who went a 138 in the 200 IM in short course yards, absolutely obliterating anything else anyone had ever gone, he doesn't even swim the 200 IM. He was able to do it because he had superior underwaters compared to anyone. Doesn't matter what strokes you're swimming, the underwaters are important. In the 200 IM, they are the most important. Now, the next tip here is to have fast transitions. This carries over from what we're talking about with these underwaters. Basically, in longer events especially, people think the walls are an opportunity to rest. And like we talked about these transition IM, 50s or 100s, however you wanna do it, you really need to focus on not resting on the wall and having a lot of power in and out of the wall. Oftentimes you see in that 400 IM, especially in long course, some swimmers have very, very slow turns and they're using it as an opportunity to take in a lot of oxygen and give your body a break while you're actually doing the turn, if it's an open turn, or when you push off the wall underwater. In the 200 IM, that does not apply at all. And that's where you get separation when you see someone like Caleb Dressel absolutely destroy the competition. He is not resting on the turns. He is leveraging the speed to go even faster and pull away from the competition. So you gotta have fast transitions. Now this third point here, I really like, it's about strength and power. Like anything under a 200, 200 and below, you have to have power. You can train resistance in the water. That could be with paddles, with fins, could also be with resistance cords, with parachutes, building the strength in the stroke so that you can power through the water. This is really important in the 200 and down. You can also do dry land training, and this will help you develop strength out of the water that you can apply in the water as well. Now, this fourth tip here is talking about how to be great in the 50 and the 100. We're talking about the 200 IM, but if you wanna be good at the 200 IM, you need to focus on being good at the 50 and 100 butterfly, 50 and 100 backstroke, 50 and 100 breaststroke, and of course, the 50 and 100 freestyle. And when you start to focus on these specific events and you actually do them in competition or in workout, and you try and actually go a best time, it's gonna help your IM because you have to focus on the details in those specific strokes and those specific distances so you can get to that next level. And if you look at any top 200 IMer, they are world-class in the 100 of every single stroke. It's almost impossible to find someone who is really, really good at the 200 IM and they just can't put together a 100. Very similar, we talked about in the 400 IM, that would be like the 200s of stroke. But in the 200 IM, it's all about the 50 and the 100 of stroke. Really focus on those events and try and be good at each of those races. Now this last point here is all about tempo. We talk about speed in the 50 and the 100. If you wanna really be good at the 200 IM, you're probably also pretty good at the 100 IM. And the way you can do this by focusing not only on the 100 IM as a race or doing it in practice and trying to go a best time in that, but going above race pace in workout. And really this is important because you need to have that easy speed at every point in the race. You don't wanna be over exhausting yourself on every single stroke. When you dive in, yeah, you wanna be going fast in the 200 IM, but your first few strokes should feel like easy power. And the way you do that is by training your tempo above race pace on a consistent basis. We've talked about USRPT, speed training versus distance. A lot of these principles really start to take a shape. So if you guys are interested in this type of content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video, let me down below in the comments what 
what you guys think. And by the way, are you guys 100 IM, 200 IM, or 400 IM fans? Which one do you like? For me, it's the 100 IM. I wanna know what you guys like. Finally, if you guys are not already in the My Swim Pro VIP Facebook group, make sure you check it out, link below. I wanna see you guys in there. We have over 10,000 swimmers from around the world. Beginners, intermediate, triathletes, open water swimmers, former Olympians, everyone's in there, including the My Swim Pro team and myself. So I look forward to seeing you in there. And finally, I know I said finally twice, but if you haven't already checked out my new book, Swim Like a Pro, I package everything I know into one book. Make sure you check it out, link below. I hope to see you guys in the next video and happy swimming.